All right. Okay. We have lots that has happened. Um, let's see, how about Paul, you want to tell us uh, the progress on the prototype that you did using um, SSL and Logbook of the Word? Oh, OK. Um, I did create uh, a Jupyter Notebook showing the procedure for signing and approving in a couple of weeks when I looked at it, um, using the logbook of the world credentials to actually uh, exchange a authentication token. There was, I was sure that this was possible, but I had not worked out the details. And now there's a demonstration that it is possible. Um, two demonstrations, in fact, one using the command line tools from OpenSSL and the other um, using the API from Python. Uh, a third demonstration would be useful to show it from the C API, but I haven't done that. And there was a difference between the, the two implementations. As I recall, there was uh, some unexpected behavior. Like one of That's... them worked, one of them worked better than the other. That has slipped out of my brain, if if that's true. <laughs> I don't yeah, remember I just, that. Yeah, I just remember there was uh, uh, more work required for one than the other, but they, I think they both work, right? They both work. They create the same results. Okay, good. It must have been minor. Yeah, so that was a big step, step forward because it was it goes from completely theoretical to having um, something working in Jupyter Notebook and then I think that the next step, well, we'll also uh, I should back up and say that we just, uh, it's captured in the Opulent Voice um, document is some, the beginning of, of some decisions about the database in the, in the payload, or uh, if you wanna think of it in, in the central node of a terrestrial network um, or in, in the payload of a spacecraft. So when I say payload, I know that's overloaded. Uh, we've We've realized that you have the payload and a frame and a payload in the spacecraft, but um, for, for the most part, we've been able to keep these two terms uh, separate and, and distinct in our minds. Um, you know, but but there is some state that has to be kept track of, and so we we started making some decisions and really kind of um, looking hard at exactly what the spacecraft needs to keep track of and trying to decide how long the token needs to be. It doesn't really have to be that long because the the token um, is is not um, it doesn't have meaning just by itself. So it, it doesn't have to stand alone. So the, the the little bit of math that I did a couple of weeks ago uh, is not as critical. Uh, and the the reason why is because the token is connected up to uh, call sign SSD, and that entire string is really what you want to look at. Um, when you're doing authentication and authorization. So all of that work was captured in the document that I linked, um, the opulent voice. So that was, we're trying very hard to implement it and show it working over the air. Yeah, the, the opulent voice prototyping has been mainly uh, focused on getting things working for a voice demo. And so the token is in there, but the processing of it is not. Uh, that'll be for some future demonstration. Yeah, what what kind? I guess today's today's focus should be on like what kind of demonstration. Is there anything that we are doing now that would jeopardize it? Like, is there anything we need to do today or in the near future? Or and all and I guess also today is where we really need to look at like uh, the what the poster session or the poster presentation or any sort of paper or any sort of uh, documentation for for DEF CON that uh, a, a draft, looking at a draft of that is, is something that we need to do this week. Yeah, unfortunately, the nature of um, security systems is that you can't really demonstrate security. You can demonstrate that it grants access, but you can't really demonstrate that it denies access in all the appropriate cases. And the only thing that the security community has to offer is uh, eyeballs, peer review, and hopefully superior review. Um, 
Yeah. If we well, can put put the details out in a succinct way and make it really clear what we're planning to do and get that looked at by the right people, then we we'll, can either get a pat on the head or we can get some useful feedback about what might be wrong with it. Right. I enthusiastically agree. So where are we on being able to present the details? Well, we're, except for the document that you already referenced, uh, we're not much of anywhere. Um, my focus has been on the voice demo for the last couple of weeks. So I haven't done anything about creating a poster. Okay. Yeah, I think Talak probably would be able to answer that. Yeah, sure. So there's no much work that I did, but just about uh, finalizing the kind of content that we're going to put in. So I'm closely following the document updates, the Google Doc updates. Uh, I'm not seeing the authentication part that was kept in. So, so maybe by this uh, weekend, I'll just try to put in a draft. So one half part of the poster will contain the uh, the setup, the opulent voice demo with authentication, the certificate and all. And the other half would be the related to the jamming and all the future work, the future research work that we want to do. I was thinking that I partition it in that way and I started reading about it. So maybe, yeah, this, this weekend is something that I would, uh, I would like to put a, the draft into the group and then maybe we could review and start the process. Okay, that sounds really good. I think maybe by this time next week that we could, it sounds like by this time in a week from today that we could um, review it together and and go ahead and make a make a cut of it. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but like I think the 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 two topics, uh, the you know, uh, defending against jamming in this particular environment, there's lots to be said, and it might be super fun. Um, and yeah, the authentication protocol, um, that's a good, that's a good split. That's a good dividing line. What do you think, Paul? Well, for the DEF CON audience in particular, I, I would be inclined to focus on this, the authentication, uh, part of it. They are not necessarily RF jamming experts, and I'm not sure we're going to have very much to say about that because we're not an anti-jam protocol. There are a bunch of well-known things you can do to mitigate jamming that we're not doing. Um, I would like to have as many eyeballs as possible focused on the procedures and protocols for authentication and leave the rest. Uh, it can be a separate presentation or a, you know, something different, but I would like to have a poster that attracts a lot of attention that is just authentication. Okay, so you'd like to focus on the first half. Yeah. Okay. The we there are a few people in in Radio Frequency Village that that are pretty good at uh, at recommending things for jamming. It's an open question as to whether or not we had implement any of those because it, anything that you implement to make it really really hard to jam makes it harder to use the system in the first place. So it's a really interesting trade-off, um, which I, I think would probably be of interest to Talak. I mean, just going through all of that and presenting it in an environment that doesn't get a whole lot of attention in channels that in terms of amateur radio are underutilized would be would be valuable work. Um, but yeah, the, the in general, the DEF CON crowd is gonna be able to critique the authentication protocol um, much, more, much more broadly, it's gonna be a lot of people that would be able to to cr critique the the protocol rather than rather than the RF channel. So I don't know. I'd like to include the the potential jamming research and and leave it maybe leave it as a sort of a open question, you know, or have some sort of content about it in the poster. But to to present the authentication um, primarily that that would be the the main main point. Sure, I think I think that can be done. Maybe uh, maybe three three fourth of the poster can be dedicated towards the authentication, the various forms of authentication, or, and the rest could be like an open-ended question. As I said, uh, could put some bullet points of what what all could be done, and 
what all do the crowd thinks about uh, maybe right. that, that's what can yeah. be done yeah yeah i think that a, a good eye catching poster would get a lot of feedback so it, it'll be it'll be good we'll do our very best to get as uh, much feedback as possible it's the right audience they're interested in security and this is the rf village so it should work so what do we need to do to get there Oh, any okay. questions or is there any anything that we can do to help get this uh, done over the next week? Sure, I think uh, I have a couple of questions here. So, so when you when you say uh, using the authentication uh, mechanism, is it just only for the control commands or will it be for every digital message? I mean, for every normal payload also, do we do this authentication? Because I'm thinking it will be a lot of payload for the processing. Uh, that it would be adding up. Well, in my view, it's neither. Um, the The basic model, think of it as a, a short a session, which could be anywhere from a single transmission to a long conversation with, with many participants. Uh, each user transmitting into the, this session uh, may potentially need to be authenticated. In the, in the most locked down situation, then as any, soon as anybody joins the conversation and transmits, uh, the payload will have to make sure that they believe uh, that person is who they say they are and check the block list and make sure they're not uh, to be turned off. Uh, that doesn't have to be done on every transmission. Uh, it has to be done often enough, whatever that means. And the spacecraft, can, uh, or the payload or whatever we're calling it, um, can decide based on its own resource availability and, and policy requirements, how often that has to be done. Uh, anywhere, there's a whole spectrum. Uh, once we put the mechanism in place, it doesn't even have to be used. If the spacecraft is not having a problem with, with misbehaving users and, uh, or it just hasn't gotten around implementing authentication, fine. It'll just work. Everybody will get a transmit and, uh, and no harm done. But on the other end of the spectrum, if the, uh, the policy of the spacecraft is that no more than a few seconds worth of unauthorized transmission can ever be allowed, then every new person who joins the conversation or any conversation on the spacecraft will be challenged and has to respond correctly with a uh, appropriate token or they're going to get turned off and blocked until they do authenticate. Um, not every transmission, not every frame, but because we're in an RF environment where the central controller can't be sure that this frame came from the same transmitter as the previous frame because a, uh, a bad actor could always turn on a transmitter at a higher power and override an uplink each frame does have to have a little bit of information uh, in it which is assumed to be hard for the attacker to reproduce and at the very basic level that would be a token that might never change or might change only uh, on demand and we could get a little more sophisticated than that depending on what we think the threat model is it could be a rolling token a token that changes with time so you can't reuse it for more than a second or two and uh, that would be reasonable and i think probably when we're done with the protocol we'll have something like that um, the amount of actual overhead on the air is pretty minimal even for the completely locked down situation as long as you're willing to tolerate you know a, a reasonable amount of unauthorized transmission like a few seconds long before somebody gets locked out yeah. Does that help clarify at least what I'm thinking about in the situation? Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah. That, that's helpful. Yeah. yeah. So the other uh, doubt which I had is like, uh, are we only sticking to this uh, LOTW based authentication or are we open to researching the other forms of authentication? Like for example, using the channel state information or using the FEC codes 
as a form of authentication, there are some research topics that which are in, of course, they might take a lot of time to uh, implement, but uh, I just want to know the, the flexibility that we are having over here. Maybe, maybe are we going to fit having the baseline as the LOTW and have more flexibility towards other forms of authentication so that we could implement that as an R&D project for this uh, satellite and maybe that could become reference for the other upcoming open source projects. I just want to know the flexibility for the R&D part over here. Yeah. Well, I, I think the answer for all projects like this is that we're completely flexible. Uh, anything that's worth trying is worth doing. Um, I'm, we do need, as far as I can see, there's no way to do this authentication problem without some kind of a network of trust. There's got to be some source of truth and a way of distributing that source of truth out into the world. And that's always been the problem for encryption or authentication on the internet or on the on networks in general, that uh, the public key infrastructure is the hard part. And we're in the enviable situation of having a public key infrastructure that's already been built for us, um, that's good enough. And so using it is, is a reasonable place to start. But if there's other, such, other solutions that don't require that somehow or uh, have a better solution or even just a different solution, I don't see why we can't experiment with those as well. That's, that points to the need for maybe a couple of uh, couple extra bits in the, in the frame header saying, you know, what kind of authentication am I? But that might not have to be carried frame by frame. It might just be part of the um, network transaction for responding to an, authenticate, on a, an authentication challenge. I'm interested to hear more about what you're thinking here because I don't know of any solution that doesn't require something equivalent to the logbook of the world. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I do, I do agree. I mean, that 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 OTW is a perfect baseline, and maybe I, I'll I'll come up with, with whatever alternatives I'm thinking, uh, and I'll just start out list those list those out in the group and for further discussion. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's all from my side. Yeah, yeah cool. No, we, I, I agree. We have, we've got a, a pretty good system to, to go ahead and prototype and implement, but if there is something that we want to look at uh, in parallel, then then I think we're enthusiastic about going ahead and trying it because, I mean, that's a whole paper in and of itself, right? Is you know, can you successfully leverage Logbook of the World and SSL and, and make it work? I think the answer so far is absolutely yes. And it would be very appropriate for this particular, um, you know, target market and product and all. Um, but we can see that there's some, some creakiness and some, some issues and, and some, some drawbacks to, to using the whole chain. Um, but then again, I, I think it's it's pretty darn good. It's the it may be the best that we have. So so Talak, if you have a alternative or there's some other ecosystem or some other method, then that would be very uh, interesting to to look at. Um, I think for the prototype, we'll we'll keep steam in ahead and and leverage what we what we have with a logbook of the world and open SSL. Um, but yeah, please please inform us if there's something that we need to to consider as an alternative or that we can compare and contrast and, and get some, some good results from uh, like a, an AB comparison. I mean, I, I know of sure. theoretical ones, sure. you know, like there's, there, you know, some, some that we would have to make, for, make up from scratch, um, you know, but I'll, I'll rely on you because I think your studies here have been uh, uh, pretty good that you're further along than, than I am for sure. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Yeah. Cool. I don't know, Paul. Any any thoughts on on what what comes next? It sounds like the Jupyter notebook thing was a big step forward. Um, are, are, we're we I think we're still at the point where we're trying to get it to work over the air, and and maybe not yet ready to implement the authentication and authorization stuff. 
what's your feeling on on how soon that might happen let me answer the first part of the question first which is what's next and i think there are details that need to be worked out um, to what the message protocol between the, the ground station and the payload needs to be i don't think it's good enough to just have a a static token forever do you think it needs to roll like you were talking earlier i think something like that is going to be needed um and i want to come up with a situation a, a design for that that can work in the zero authentication um, implementation where the payload is dumb about authentication but can also be pretty good for a more secure version. I think I have notions about how that's going to work, but again, I haven't worked out, worked all the way into the details. And I think those details are what needs to go on the poster because everybody can probably agree, barring a few crazy people on the fringe that open <laughs> SSL is, is secure enough and fine. Um, if we use it correctly, that it'll generate more than enough authentication reliability. But I also know that with security systems, it's very easy to design something dumb that um, that has giant gaping holes you can drive a truck through. And I'm afraid that in my inexperience with crypto systems and authentication systems that I might design one of those. And that's the main reason why I wanna get uh, protocol details out in front of the DEF CON crowd so they can see and point out, you know, point at my poster and laugh and say, look, you made the classic mistake here at step three. Yeah, that would be good to find out. I mean, I, so, I know it's not, in, uh, you know, just speaking for myself, I, I, it's, I've learned um, to, to go ahead and put those things on posters or papers or, or say them in a presentation and then have people laugh and point. Um, but I know that not everybody else is is enthusiastic about soliciting comment and critique this way. So yeah, we need to we need to do all that we can to prepare a good poster. Um, and I, the little bit that I know from information theory is that you can attack this or you can mitigate this in in at least two ways. So your token can either be long or or it can roll. It can change, right? So those are the two degrees of freedom that you have. And you know, I mean, looking at the number of users that we expect to have at any one time, the token really doesn't have to be that long in order to avoid the first problem, which is collisions, you know, having the same token. And then if you add in the the the, the call sign and SSD is actually part of the token, that's another degree that you have that, that kind of, ha it's not a real hash, but it mixes things up quite a bit. Um, and then the, the threat models that we've walked through in the in the document are, are things that somebody would have to expend an awful lot of effort to do because of the directional nature of microwave transmissions. So all those things together, you know, we for, for the for at least like amateur microwave terrestrial beacon or or satellite, I think we're in decent shape now from what I know just from formal learning. But then again, I have limitations too because this is a, it's an area that I know a lot about, but um, not employed as a cybersecurity, you know, wireless security professional. So that's that's the reason why we're talking about these things and, and trying to work as much out in advance as possible and get them on get them good on a poster. So I enthusiastically agree, but we're really we really haven't screwed up too badly yet. Um, you know, is from a information theory perspective, we're we're still in decent shape. So, you know, if we can get yeah. a draft of like to lock, do everything that you know about and don't don't try to make it perfect. Just whatever draft you have and your thoughts and chuck it out there as soon as possible. And then we'll all take we'll all plow into it and edit it, you know, just in some format that we can edit. We'll all work together and we'll make it good enough. So don't worry about it being perfect. We're, we're just going to get it to the point where it's uh, more, you know, where, where it's good enough for, for DEF CON. And, and then it'll be a, a work in progress for, for probably months, um, really, uh, or if not, if not another year, it'll be to the point where we uh, go, oh yeah, this is all sorts of 
things that we we now know and can prove through implementations. Um, so don't wait. Anything that you've got that you're interested in, including the jamming part, uh, just go ahead and get it down in whatever form and 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 publish it to to the list or to us as soon as possible, and then we'll run with it. You know, because there's a whole lot of good stuff in here, and and I think we've got a decent take on it. Um, you know, getting getting a review from from a from a crowd like DEF CON is uh, is a really good opportunity for us. Sure, sure, Julie really noted. So the one the one the question when you, when you guys think, uh, say about this rolling uh, hash or the rolling timestamp, uh, I, I think definitely at least a changing timestamp is definitely required at least to mitigate the replay attacks, right? I mean the the most basic form of the attack is, is replay attack. So yeah, I think that's that's true. At least a timestamp is a basic thing that which we should definitely think of. So just just wanted to add that. Yes. The, the weak point, I think, in our whole threat model is the assumption, and it's only an assumption, that it's hard for the bad actor to intercept the uplink transmission. If it were actually impossible, then you could do a lot. No, nothing would matter. There'd be no threat of replay attacks because there's no way an attacker could ever get a transmission in the first place. Right. Um, this, of course, is not strictly true. and especially for a malicious attacker who's trying to uh, specifically attack one other station. It's likely that they're local to each other in some sense of the word, and they might be able to intercept the uplink. So if there are cheap things that don't cause a lot of problems for other use cases that we can do to mitigate that, we should do them. Yeah. And I think there are. There, there are. And another Another take on this is yeah. is that what the the things that we're assuming the that it's hard for a bad actor to intercept the uplink depends a lot on the frequency choice too that it's a directional microwave link. But as soon as you go to something that is not directional, um, you know, so this is an open source protocol, and we hope that people use it, and they're going to use it on different frequencies, um, maybe not low enough to where it can be omnidirectional, but you know, I mean, we're talking about terrestrial links that might be omnidirectional. So as soon as you go omnidirectional, then then anybody can intercept the uplink, and then you have a, if it's a static token, then then somebody that wanted to could could mess with you. And I mean, yeah, this is, a lot of people listening to this might go, well, this these concerns are down in the noise. But if we really want this to be a reusable and and useful protocol, then it's going to be used out well outside of contexts that we're assuming. So I think anything that we can use that standard uh you know in, essentially industry standard would is is something that we should become competent uh at and and at least like try try it and see what the cost is anything that we add in terms of overhead you know comes out of the budget right but as of today i think we we have some some we have energy to spend so just have to sp spend it smartly I think there are tricks that won't actually cost any RF energy that will only cost some, some CPU energy and some complexity, which are things that are abundant and or free. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay. And if you're terrestrial, it doesn't matter whether you're omnidirectional or directional because the attacker can always put a receiver somewhere between the transmitter and the, and the central hub. Yeah, that's a good point. So the directional saves you if you're pointed up. <laughs> okay. Because it's not cost effective to fly a, you know, a balloon over to your yeah. you know, attackee's <laughs> house. Right. Or to put a spacecraft in orbit to listen to the transmissions. Uh, but terrestrially, your dishes are pointed near the horizon and they're interceptable. Okay. There's another opportunity that's much, much sooner than, than DEF CON in August, and that's the local DEF CON meetup this week. Where we could trot these ideas out and, and at least give you know give people some eyeballs and and ask there there may be some folks in the room that might have some opinions. They're mainly networking. This is a, a group that's mainly computer networking and um, either red team, blue team, you know, industry people. But you think maybe that might be might be worth speaking up and showing it. Uh, it would definitely be worth doing that, whether we can get there in time. 
that's another question. Okay. For, yeah, we would have weekend. to have we'd have to have a something like a slide or or poster or image or list of something. I we can see what we can pull together. When is that? Is that this Wednesday? So two days from now or I'm not sure. I think it might be. Okay. It I'll I'll take a little action item to figure out yes, if that's it is okay. the thirteenth. Okay. So hey, Talak, do you think you can finish a poster in two days? <laughs> Well, <laughs> that would be a bit difficult. I just came to my office and directly yeah. came to see me. But okay. I think I can try definitely out. I mean, if that's if that's really important and if that would help us a lot, I will definitely try my best. Yeah, well, what you know what? I could put in the next two days. I'll definitely try. Just if you, by in two days, if you can just list if you any sort of content whatsoever, if, even if it's just listed out like your concerns, it, it you know very informal. What? What Paul and I will try to do is put together like a, just a slide, uh, you know, and and then we'll 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 send out the link to the to the working document too, because and and see if we can catch anybody that will actually go walk through and read it and give an opinion. It's just it's a good idea to start getting it in front of more, the more people, the better, to where we can catch the the big things that we might be missing. So we'll do that. If talk if you can. If there's anything that you can contribute just in the next two days, just in terms of like, especially about the jamming stuff, you know, and any future research or, you know, just to throw it out there, because you never know who might be in the room. Might be someone that might want wants to help. But, you know, sure, not, you're saying it need not be a poster, but it's just some kind of bullet points to discuss about, right? Yes. Any bullet points that you're most interested in or anything that you that you think uh, that you currently got or already have written. You know, and then Paul and I will try to put together. Um, you know, we'll stand up there and and talk about it. I think it's it might just be easier just to stand up in front of these these folks because we know them. We see them uh, almost. You know, uh, you know. There's a meeting once a month, and and uh, we're we're there quite a lot. Uh, so it might just be easier to stand up and talk about it uh, and put it on their on their Slack and ask. Um, and then there's a couple of other local DefCon groups that I have that I know people in. So now is the time to start socializing it. So we'll 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 do that. And yeah, if you can give us any ammunition, then that would be great. Sure, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, in the next okay. two days, whatever I can pull it off, I'll definitely yeah do that. Yeah, yeah, just informal, not you know, not a. I mean, hey, you know what? If you can finish a full poster, that'd be. <laughs> <laughs> if you just happen to <laughs> accidentally finish a poster session, that's great. But but uh, yeah, just any bullet points would be super helpful. Yeah, my twin in the paddle world can do that. <laughs> but not here. <laughs> not here. Totally yeah. understand. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't. I guess that's. I don't know any other any other questions or or anything outside of the subject that you want to talk about. Uh, I think um, I do have, but I think it's better I right? sit down and properly work on it and then ask these questions in the, in the group. I think that's better. Okay. Do you, is this a good time to meet next week? Sure, sure. Perfectly, perfectly fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just plan on coming back next week and and then there'll be more questions and and we'll and Paul and I will probably have a report from the meeting by then. So uh, I think it'd be good. Yeah, cool. This awesome. Is good. Yeah, I think no, this, this is a good is, plan. Yeah. It is, and it's super fun. I, I've really enjoyed being able to see this uh, kind of come together and develop. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about it. Thank you both for such uh, your attention and effort. It's uh, deeply appreciated. Now that I've uh, yeah. had a chance to sneak a peek at my uh, uh, my Jupyter notebooks and refresh my memory, I could give a slightly more coherent explanation of what they are <laughs> sure go the, ahead for the broadcast if you like oh sure do you want to share the screen or anything to to show it to us or if you want to get to that level of detail um well it's up to you whatever and whatever amount of energy you want to put into explaining it i will graciously accept and enthusiastically endorse um okay let's walk through it then um, okay. let me make this window much smaller so that I can share it and have it be legible. And and I just have to figure out how to do all that kind of stuff. 
So I want to share a, a window. I have too many windows. Yeah, that's a common problem. And they're tiny on these little, uh, there it is. Let's try that. Are you seeing? Uh, yeah, I'm seeing. Um, yeah, I right. am. This is from the frame decoder. No, that's not what I intended to share. Um, <laughs> it's a, it is a, 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 or no, a, 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 a test. It says open SSL meets P4 A A A A via logbook of the world. Okay, good. And that's what I, that is what I intended to share. Yeah, sorry, I'm looking um, at the wrong tab up at the top. <laughs> Let me, uh, I can it hide does, some of this. Yeah, it does actually, it does actually look like it's your, the Python notebook. Okay, that's probably good enough. So this is the uh, Python notebook that's uh, command line stuff only, the original version. Uh, and all I'm trying to demonstrate here is that I can use the, the public key infrastructure from Logbook of the World to sign a document, not using nothing that I wouldn't have as an ordinary Logbook of the World user. And then validate the signature again without any special secret knowledge from AWRL. So here in the first section, I am simply creating uh, the necessary, I'm grabbing the, the directory and so forth. And here I've run uh, in this section here, I'm running open SSL command line utility using the uh, PKCS 12 module, which is the module that you know, can encapsulate a lot of uh, certificate information into, a, into an omnibus file and reading out the necessary stuff. This horrendous looking string here is the official standards-based name for a call sign as defined by AWRL as a uh, third-party entity. Uh, so by searching for this, I'm pulling the call sign out of that uh, document. And here you can see that I use my own certificate as an example. So it pulls out my call sign. And then I grab all the rest of the stuff too, the private key, the public key, the certificates and so on. And each of those is just another call to the PKCS module of the open SSL program with the necessary command line arguments to get the thing that I want. And here I've, you can see them all, I've written, been written out as files for the purpose of this uh, command line version. Here the, I'm using the X509 module, which is about the format of a certificate and dumping the, the information from my certificate. So you can see here it was signed by the league, logbook of the world. Uh, this is the production server rather than the, uh, the root server and so on and so on. If you expanded that to show all the information dumped, you could see that it was uh, er had everything you needed. Uh, here I'm extracting the public key um, I think, what am I doing here? And I've created a message. Here's my, my designated message and put that into a file using this line of code and then sign the file using this code here, the digest command of open SSL and creating this signature file. Notice it's only 128 bytes long. It's not a, not a heavyweight thing at all. So I can easily send that on the uplink, regardless of how big the thing I was signing was. And the, uh, finally, I'm able to use the verify uh, subcommand, uh, the digest module of OpenSSL to verify it. And sure enough, it verifies okay. And some other tests that are not visible here show that anything you change will cause that to not be verified okay. So this proves that the ground station is able to use the public key infrastructure to sign 
an arbitrary thing and that that can then be validated by the spacecraft or by uh, authentication ground station, if that's the way you want it to implement it um, without any special knowledge. And that is not the entire system, of course, that's just the key component that makes the, the entire system possible. There's a further uh, spreadsheet of the, or not spreadsheet, but uh, Jupyter Notebook that does it with Python APIs. And you can see in some ways it's a lot cleaner. There are no files to mess with. There are some data structures that have to be messed with. Here's that identifier again for a call sign. And some things are a little less pretty because we have to deal with the uh, possibility of exceptions and problems, but that makes it more realistic and more like a real implementation. And once again, we're able to show that uh, the signature can be validated. There's a third notebook, which simply combines the two in parallel. So they're easier to compare, which we don't need to go over. So that's so this, the status on that. So this would be the, the, when we say there's a challenge to the ground station, this is the, the process or part of the process of, of replying to that challenge and, and presenting credentials. Yes. I imagine that the spacecraft would send a, a directed challenge to one or more ground stations that would contain some special information, a nonce or something of that nature. And each ground station that was so addressed would create a message containing the nonce and containing their own randomly generated token or something having to do with generating future tokens. Uh, depending on the exact details of how we work out the protocol and probably his own certificate just for convenience and ship that all up in a message to the authentication entity, which again might be aboard the spacecraft or might be at a ground control station. And that that would be self-contained enough for the, the authentication entity to say, yes, that's really who it says, says it is check his um, list of uh, blocked uh, and accepted stations and decide whether to grant access and make a database entry locally on board the spacecraft saying, okay, tokens generated according to this information are to be accepted. And then from then on, the, uh, the ground station just generates a token according to that information and appends it to each frame that goes up and every frame gets at least a little bit of validation according to that, the length of that token. Okay, cool. I think it's a really good summary of where we're at. And I, I think the little bits of that that I hand waved are the parts that need to get worked out and put on a poster because that's where the devil is in, in those details. All right, looks like we have a mission and some action items. All right, let's work hard on that over the next week and see where we end up on uh, next Monday. Okay. Looking forward to it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Any, if need anything, uh, just uh, reach out on Slack or email. And and thank you so much. This was really cool. Thank you. You bet. All right. See you soon. Thank you.